Hello everyone, and as you can tell from the title of the video, what I'm going to be discussing here is Modern Warfare 2's game design. And the reason why I want to discuss this is because a lot of feedback has come through over the past couple weekends about the game and how people feel about it and how they want to improve it, how they want it to be played, and everything else. I just want to give you guys a heads up. When it comes to developing video games, or any game, any movement, anything of the sort, it is 100% intentional from the very beginning of every single thing that is done. Especially on a game as big as Activision's Call of Duty, you can guarantee that every single thing in the game is 100% intentional, especially when it's coming from developers that have stuck around from the very beginning, such as Infinity Ward and Treyarch. So with that today, we all know the problems that Modern Warfare 2 is currently having, at least on a player point of view, which is that silence and the stage reload. So for those who don't know, Dead Silence is again a field upgrade as it was in Modern Warfare 2019. And what this means is that you have to earn it. It's not just a perk as it was in all the other Call of Duties or like it was in Vanguard with the ninja perk. Um, you now have footsteps again and you have to earn to basically not have footsteps for a limited amount of time. But just like in Modern Warfare 2019, if you get a kill while Dead Silence is activated, It'll keep going. <clears throat> and then, along with that, we also have the stage reload. And what the stage reload means, basically, is that you can't sprint cancel anymore when it comes to reloading. Like, if you decide, like, if an enemy comes up on you for any reason whatsoever, actually, if you want to stop reloading, after you press the reload button, you're basically going to have to finish the reload, or you're doomed. All right, you're going to die, uh, whatever scenario that you might be in. And it creates a new skill gap. It creates a skill gap that is not familiar uh, to Call of Duty players over the past few years. I would even say decade or more um, because it's been a decade even since Black Ops 2 came out, believe it or not. So knowing those things, it all shows signs of a different game design to be played from all the other cons. Um, and with that, there's also less HUD elements. Um, this is just, I'm going off of observation though. I haven't actually dug into the game and tried to figure out if there is actual less HUD elements, but at a, most of the time when you are in the game, there's not as much on your HUD in comparison to, let's say other Call of Duty games. I could be wrong about that. This is completely 100% like opinion based but I think they are driving for less visual noise um, and overall what I think they are attempting to do with the game and the game design uh, is that they are attempting to force the game to play differently all the years prior and what we're accustomed to it just seems like they're trying to create like a new skill gap like I mentioned previously that we're not used to and this wasn't done on accident, guys. Like, this was completely done 100% intentionally, like I've already said. They knew what the game they wanted to make and how they wanted it to play. Like, putting these restrictions on the player again to earn dead silence or to not be able to sprint, cancel, reload. It's done intentionally. And it just supports that idea. And this game is not going to play like all other gods for that reason. And my best theory as to why they are doing this is the first, like I already said, reduce visual noise and just keep, keep the screen clean. Um, an example that I can think of in comparison is Rainbow Six Siege. It doesn't have very much. They want it to be more methodical, as a more methodical game. And I think they want to take Call of Duty kind of in that direction due to the popularity of that game. And they want to have a good mix. All right, they want to bring people from everywhere else. Like they want to bring in as many people as possible. Like it's a business and everything else. But we'll dive into that a little bit later in the video. Um, and then also the other thing, while keeping the screen clean with less HUD elements, I think they're also wanting to magnify audio stimuli. And the reason for this, I think, is just to make it a more competitive game, such like, such as Rainbow Six Siege. 
they want this to be a more competitive game like that is 100 percent clear and yeah they have skill based matchmaking in it and they've had it in years prior it would have been more obvious if it wasn't um but it doesn't really matter because it's for competitive reasons they want this to be a more competitive game and that is 100 percent like pointing to that fact when you look at these things on a deeper level and i'm guessing this is also to kind of create a better balance between the two senses in order to play the game and while in the past footsteps have always been a part of call of duty i believe there they want there to be more audio stimuli for players to be conditioned to or eventually be conditioned to because this is just the beta so i want i think they are trying to condition the player and the user to certain audio elements to help them with their de decision making skills in the moment and i think this is going to just again like i've already mentioned drive the competitiveness of the game and <clears throat> i don't know if there is going to be a better balance between the audio and visual stimuli i really don't know if that is the answer but if there is i have no idea why they're doing this however because we know they're activision blizzard because we know what they do when they make these games the answer is always related in somehow to making more money and putting more people and to put more time into these games and the biggest thing that drives uh, any business with money is retention retention and also buying DLC items, I don't even want to call them DLC items, the microtransactions, whatever you want to call them from the shop. So retention plus those things is going to, has been basically the main source of income or treated as the main source of income for the games, not just the game being bought. Because if you compare those two numbers, they're going to be drastically different. You're going to see more money is actually spent on these games over the past few years when it comes to those microtransactions in comparison to the money that is spent for these people to buy the game. Like, drastically different. Like, I don't know how much is spent. I think it's millions every year in order for people to buy the, these games. But when it comes to the shop items and everything else, the microtransactions, there's billions put into this these games every single year. And that's it man like that's really all it is activision knows what they're doing every decision is intentional and whatever the business executives say will force the hand of the developers even if the developers wanted to make it to where it wasn't a campy game or i shouldn't even say that because while the gameplay does drive and support players to be more campy i think they're trying to make it more methodical somehow i want to give kind of an open-ended uh idea to the decision making skills when it comes to designing this game but when it comes to the developers they don't have a lot or if any creative decisions in what they're doing and everything is done to drive players to spend more money the game does not have to play great and i'm gonna repeat that actually i'm not anyhow it doesn't have to play great it just it just has to play well enough so that people will first buy the game. And once they buy the game, well, foot's in the door now. But now their plan is to get people to spend more money on the game. But how do you do that? Well, you have to increase their attention. So how do you increase your attention? You make the game only good enough to keep people bringing themselves back to the game. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Because if they are able to do that, you're going to see the shop when the game is full released. And then, who knows from there? Because they make billions off the shop items and microtransactions in these games over the past few years. And it's not an accident. They know what they're doing with whatever patent that they have. And they're not going to stop. Like, why would they stop if they're making billions, millions of dollars? It's... I guess what I'm trying to say here is why all this game might be Modern Warfare 2 and if you're a classic COD fan like me 
and you played Modern Warfare 2 back in its prime day and everything, it, it's not going to play the same thing. It's not going to play the same way. It's not going to have any of the fun, uh, arcadey stuff that it used to be. Like, no, that's like we're in a completely new generation now. That's why these games are being remade, is to bring a new generation in and also get people to spend money off of nostalgia. That's all it's for, guys. Like, this game is not meant to be this great grand game. Like I mentioned before, it is just made to be good enough to get people to buy it first, and then get people to keep coming back to it to play it, because it's a very easy game to just launch up, just kick back, maybe not relax, but at least open up and try to play. And then if you're in the game, they're only one step away from getting you to buy something in the shop. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna shove stuff in your face just like they've done all these years before. Like this is nothing new. This is nothing that we haven't seen from Activision already. And I'm not dissing them when I say this. Like they are a business, they have to make their money. And you can make the argument of are they making them up? Or aren't they making enough? And the fact is, is we don't know. Of course they're making enough in order to survive and everything, but it's all dependent on the business executives and where they want to be making money and how much money they want to be making from this. It has nothing else to do with anything other than reaching those goals and reaching those margins, whatever you want to call it. Because that's what it's all about, is the money making and how much more money can they keep making. Because once you start making money, once businesses start making money, the investors are going to want to see more. And if you're not making more, they're going to pull out, which means less money for development, less money for everything else, and less money for the workers, everyone. And no one wants less money. So they're going to keep driving this. They're going to keep doing this stuff so that people will give in, so that people will buy the game, so that people will buy the item shop, so that people will keep coming back to the game to be tempted to buy this stuff. It's nothing different. Other games do it. And... It's just the fact that Call of Duty is so big, and it's too big to fail. Yes, Vanguard kind of failed, but it, that's regardless of the point, is that people are still playing the games. They are still playing the games, because they do not care. Because the games are too big to fail now. And that's, that's it. They don't have to try hard to get people to buy the game. They have to try to get people to spend more money. That's it. It is not going to be this great game, guys. It can be a fun game from time to time. 